Good afternoon, YouTube. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the biggest mistake that power builders make. So it is very important that I make the distinction of the power builder because the power builder is someone who cares about their strength on the squat, bench, and deadlift, and maybe have some other compound movements, but also they do care about getting bigger muscles. So they actually do higher volumes. They're not just trying to optimize the training frequency so that way they can improve their technique. They're also trying to build a lot of muscle. So this is a mistake that I made. It was a mindset that I bought into. It was something that I even used to advocate and even now to an extent still hold near and dear to my heart because I do have a bias toward compound movements. I do have a bias toward free weight exercises, whether that be barbell or dumbbell. But it is very important that I say that I did not realize any significant changes in my physique and I did not make any significant changes into the, let's say, my, um, I didn't make significant progress toward my ideal physique until I did this. And that is actually doing isolation work. The biggest mistake that power builders make is thinking that compound movements are enough to build a big like to build all the mass that you were trying to do now they put a lot of mass on the body don't get me wrong but here's the thing you're going to be built like a fridge you are going to just have these big muscles and unless you're just very very lucky with your insertions and maybe your genetics if you don't actually do isolation work to work on weak points to actually work on completing the physique that you want it's not going to look good so if you just rely on overhead pressing to build your delts if you only rely on compound movements to work your lats if you only rely on compound movements to work smaller muscles such as your triceps your biceps your and like the delts especially because the delt isn't just the front head it's also the side and the back so the rear delt your traps, your, you have, there are a lot of muscles that are not being hit adequately by the squat, bench, deadlift, overhead press, barbell row, and uh, pull-ups. Like, those movements are key. They need to be in your program, but they are not the program. They are not all you need. You need to have more, like, you need to have more than just the barbell row. Dumbbell rows are great. Cable rows are great. I did not... Um, I got the best gains by including them into the program, not just relying on one exercise variation. The barbell back squat is a great exercise, but I didn't notice great gains in my quads until I started specializing in front squats. So that is very important to include. Hack squats even, or if you like it, the leg press. You can't just rely on these heavy compound movements because yes, they will add mass, but they're like the tonnage the volume that you're accumulating is being diffused to a bunch of other muscles and some muscles will take the load more than others so yes you're adding a lot of size but the thing is you're not adding size everywhere equally so yes you're going to get big but that isn't the same as actually having a ideal aesthetic especially if it's not the ideal aesthetic that you want so for me i noticed i was getting bigger my muscles were getting bigger but the while you can't actually change you know, the actual shape because you can't change the insertions or like how they're actually like anatomically shaped, but you can like change like the definition or the symmetry. You can work on these things, especially if you add in more exercise that allow you to target that more specifically. And if you run a minimalist program where yes, you are using the big heavy hitting compound movements, but you are neglecting everything else, you are going to doom yourself to looking big and that's it. You are not going to like, you want to be more than just big. You want to look muscular. You want to look defined. You want to have proportions and symmetry that are beautiful. Essentially, it is <laughs> unfortunate that I have to use this word a, a little bit unironically, but aesthetic, you need to have this appreciation and this artistic, um, you have to undergo this artistic endeavor of creating something that is aesthetic and you don't do that with minimalist training. If you want to paint a gorgeous picture, you want to and you want to get as much detail and you want to get as much um, out of that picture as possible, you're not just going to do one thing. You're not just going to use one color of paint. You're not just going to use one brush. You're not just going to use one tool. If you want to have the most amount of detail, the most amount of beauty thrown into it, unless you're, you know, buying into this 
um, minimalistic mindset, which is a mistake if you are a powered builder because hypertrophy tends to not favor minimalism at all and actually tends to favor more so having these exercise variations and tends to go away from even the the big three, then you would need to have just more tools in your toolbox. You would need to have more exercise available to you if you actually want to sculpt the muscle, sculpt the body the way that you want to. So if you are a power builder, do not for a second believe that compound movements are all you need. I'm not saying that they shouldn't make the bulk of your program. Even in my own programming, even in the program that I do for myself, even the programs that I make for other people, isolations do take a back seat, but they are never absent from the program. I'm never going to say, oh, well, I'm having you do a lot of pull-ups and I'm having you do a lot of rows, so your biceps are fine. I would never say that. I'm never going to say, um, oh, you're pressing two times a week, maybe three times a week. You don't need to do direct tricep work. I'm never going to say that. I'm going to make more videos in the future talking about how you would actually implement more volume for the purposes of hypertrophy. But the thing is, never ever abandon isolation exercises. If you are a power builder, if you are trying to get the most out of size and strength, if you're trying to get the best physique you possibly can, you need both compound and isolation exercises. So that is the biggest mistake I made and correcting it as early as possible is going to benefit you the absolute most. So I hope you found this video useful. I hope I was able to kind of like wake you up and you know shake you to realize that you need isolations. If you are buying into that current concept of, oh, I'm doing, I'm a beginner or I'm, I'm this, I'm that, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, doesn't matter. You need compounds, you need isolations. If you want size and strength, you need to train for size and strength. You need to train as if you were a bodybuilder because you are, and you need to train for strength because if you want to maximize your muscle size, you also need to get stronger. So if you are a power builder, do not neglect isolations. If you are a natural lifter, do not neglect isolations. Don't substitute um, isolations for compounds, but never abandon them. Have them in your program always. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Karelsa King, stanspring.com. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.